Snake is a great beginner's level project. It's not too complicated, but there's enough there to test your programming skills. So let's code it. Hi, and welcome to Bytes and Bits. As you heard in the introduction, uh, Snake, it's a great little game. It's not too difficult to program, and it's a great beginner's project. It will also give you a very good challenge because there's a number of different ways of doing this and different ways of thinking about how the snake and food and all interact. So that will give you a good idea of developing your programming skills. Um, so hopefully you've been through the Space Invaders or Asteroids courses. So you'll need that level of programming to be able to do this one yourself or if you've got similar experience from elsewhere. But you should then be able to put this together. Um, as I say, in this video, I'm going to go through the overview of the project, which should give you enough information to get started on your own. Um, I'll do a second video, which will actually take you through my version of the code. So if you do get stuck in any bits, then obviously you can, you can go back to that and I'll give you the actual um, real code that gets my version up and running. This project itself then is really a, a cut down version of the main project from my new Python course. So I've created a new beginner's Python course, which I put up on Udemy. And in that, um, this snake game is the main project. Um, but we do of course go into much more detail in programming that. Um, being Python, it's a much better developed language than the Lua that's implemented in TIC80, where we can do full object oriented programming. And that really is the main focus of that beginner's course, is to get you up to speed and be able to code all the basics and then start proper object oriented programming where you can build both the data like we do in our TIC80 code and also the methods and code into our objects to make them much more usable programmable objects. I'll put all the links in the description below um, or if you're on the web page they'll be on there. Um, so do please check that out. So do go to the website um, where you'll be able to download all the source code and all the um, assets such as sounds and, and graphics for this particular project. Um, and really do have a go and have some fun coding Snake. The Snake game is one of the classic games that um, people use for programming, especially at the beginner level. So if we jump into it, so we have our Snake game here and we have what's known as a cover screen. Uh, and then when we press the Z key, we are straight into the game. And the idea is we, we control this snake which is running around the screen and there are bits of food which the snake has to eat. Now as the snake eats food it gets longer so you'll see that as we eat bits of food we'll actually get longer and we also start to move slightly faster. There's also then a hunger counter at the top, so that little bar that's going green and then heading across and eventually getting amber and so on. That is our hunger. So if it ever gets up to the very end, then of course we will die of hunger. And the idea is that we just keep going now. We will get faster and faster. The, the food keeps on appearing. And again, the food appears at random intervals and also stays on screen for random lengths of time. And um, we just keep going. And again, the game gets harder because we are going faster. Our snake gets longer and longer. And, and we eventually then end up in a situation where, you know, there, there's so much snake and we sort of tie ourselves in loops. And of course, we can't get to food in time. And, and the game is over. So that, that's the game itself. And let's just have a quick overview now of, of things you'll have to look at if you want to program this yourself. The main crux of the game is the grid system that the snake uses. So if I restart the game, you'll see that the snake, it, it actually doesn't move smoothly. It actually moves in little jumps. So each, each block, so that, that head of the snake is actually one block. And the body of the snake then is a number of blocks which are following along behind it. And, and that block that I've used on mine is a four by four pixel block. 
And you'll see as well that the food also appears in this 4x4 pixel block. So in instead of working on the pixel grid system for the screen, what we actually, well, what I've done is I have divided that up into 4x4 pixel blocks and created a new coordinate scheme. So instead of having our 240 pixels across by 136 pixels deep, what we now have is 4x4 blocks. So that gives us our 60 pixels across by 34 pixels deep. And again, one pixel now being a 4x4 block of actual screen pixels. So for all of our, our snake movement and placement, we, we will, or at least in my game, I converted everything into my new 4x4 pixel grid system. And those are the coordinates that I use to identify where the snake is, where each bit of the body of the snake is, where the food is, where the edges of the screen. So I'm using this, I create this little border around the edge and that encloses an actual area of my 4x4 pixel grid. I then have a bit of space at the top for my, my scoreboard and the um, hunger area. But then everything inside this, this active play area then is, is drawn using this new snake grid system. Okay, and each of the graphics, so each of the little um, sprites I'm using, uh, I'm actually using only 4x4 four four pixels on each of the sprites. So remember in, in Tick80, our, our sprites are 8 pixels by 8 pixels. So I'm just drawing in the top corner of that pixel, of that sprite, and then making the rest of the sprite transparent so that um, it doesn't overlap. So that's really how, how we draw the, the snake and everything on there. <clears throat> the, the control of it then, Again, we're using all the same techniques we've used in the Space Invaders and Asteroids. So we're representing each of the elements as a, an object. So our, the, the snake is an object and that contains an array of body parts. So each of these blocks is one body part. And really, as the snake head moves around, the other body parts then follow in behind it. And that lets us trace out this, this, this um, track on the screen and have the body then follow around behind that. And of course, that then means that our collision detection is a bit easier because we simply each element fills one grid space. So to detect when our head hits a bit of food, we just have to have to check if the coordinates are the same. So that, that's the general movement around. The food itself then, um, that appears at random intervals. So the, the, the time interval between bits of food appearing is randomized. And then the length of time each individual piece of food stays on screen is randomized as well. And again, think about using an array to hold um, elements, which each of those elements then in that array will be a food object, and that food object will understand how long it's supposed to stay on the screen, and, and also how, how much it's worth in terms of adding length to our snake. Our, our hunger delay then, okay, and that really is um, a timer basically, which is reset every time the snake eats a bit of food, that's reset, and the timer starts counting up or counting down, depending on what we do it. Uh, and when that hits zero or its maximum value, at that point, the snake then dies. And you can see that we, we give various um, audible feedback on that. So on the topic of the snake dying, so we've seen then if you get to the end of the hunger bar, the snake will die. But there are other ways in which the snake dies as well. So if I, if I press Z to start again, if, if, we, if the snake hits one of the edges of the screen, so those goes out of bounds, again, that of course is, is a death. Once the snake gets a bit longer, so if we can eat some food here, and if the snake then travels back on its own body, again, that is the snake dead as well. So we've got running out of food, we have hitting the edges, or running back onto its own body, that will kill the snake. So that's the real... Um, overview of how the snake game is put together. Again, I, I'm being sort of reasonably vague here. If, if you've been through the Space Invaders and Asteroids um, tutorials, you should have all the skills now needed to, to create this game. And at the end of the day, um, this is my version of it, so obviously your version may well become a, come out different. But have a go at programming that.
um, I'll create a second video which will actually take you through my version of the software so you can see how I solved all of these different programming problems. But um, but say, have a go at doing that, um, see how you get on. If you get stuck, have a go, have a look through my second video. Um, but overall, have fun coding. See you soon. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.